Okay. On that video, you will have seen lots and lots of the different vocabulary that's here. So equator, North Pole, South Pole, oceans, temperature and weather. So I wondered if you spotted any and if you learned anything about any of them. So we're going to start off with the equator. Can you say equator? OK, it's, the equator is an imaginary line that divides the Earth in half. So if you imagine the Earth is like an orange and you've sliced it in half, that is where the equator would be. The equator is an equal distance between the North Pole, which is right at the top because North is at the top, and the South Pole. Now, the weather on the equator is hot all year round. So if you live in one of the countries around this red line, it is going to be hot, very, very hot all year round. OK. At the equator, day and night are both 12 hours long. OK, so although the weather is generally hot, there is a mountain on the equator where you can ski. So it might be hot, but you can still ski. That's pretty impressive. OK, so here we go. Here's the North Pole. So this is at the top of the Earth as you look at it. It's at the north. Uh, the North Pole is the northmost point on Earth. There is no land at the North Pole, only ice. The ice is about three metres thick. So if you imagine one of my metre stick rulers, three lengths of that. So that's pretty Thick. It's taller than me, it's taller than you, probably, well, it's taller than any member in your family. Okay, so probably. No one owns the North Pole, it is in international waters. Okay, and in summer, the sun never sets. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, at the North Pole, no matter which, uh, which way you point, you will always be south facing because you're so far north you can't look any further north okay so the south pole is the southernmost part of the earth so it's the furthest south you could ever get it is located on land topped by more than 2700 meters of solid ice the south pole is much colder than the north pole and there is a scientific base at the south pole where between 50 and 200 scientists live and work. Okay, that's pretty cool. The first person to reach the South Pole was only the first official person to reach the North Pole. Okay, so they, the first person to reach South Pole was also the person that reached the North Pole. Okay, and his name is uh, Ron Rowe. Rold, Rold. Okay, you can see his name at the bottom here if you read it. Okay, so I've got some questions for you. We now know that the equator is the hottest point on Earth. Okay, so wherever the equator is, is going to be somewhere hot. And we know that the South Pole and the North Pole, the North Pole is very icy, there's no land, and the South Pole has land with ice and snow on it. So I've got some pictures here. OK, so with your adults or just by yourself, press pause and have a think where you might think where these pictures would be located on the globe. So you can see the globe on the bottom left. Do you think they're going to be in the middle near the equator line or do you think they're going to be up near the North Pole or the South Pole? Just have a quick pause and have a discussion. OK, and here's another one for you. OK, some more pictures. Do you think they're going to be close to the North South Pole, the equator? Do you think they're in England? Do you think them? Where do you think they might be? OK, so we are going to be learning. Oh, let's go back to this. I've got a bit of a question for you, a bit of a reasoning. Do you think a polar pair would live here? Have a quick chat, have a think. Do you think it would live there? And why or why not wouldn't it? OK, so I think it wouldn't. And the reason for that is because this polar bear has lots and lots of fluff and warmth in it. 
if that polar bear was to live on that sand, it would probably get far too hot. That's, I think that's my reasoning. And I think it would get sunburnt because it, it's so white. Hmm. I wonder what your reasoning was. Okay. So we're now going to learn about different animals of the world and whereabouts they might live. And why? Why would the polar bear not live on the beach? Okay, so here's some pictures. Obviously, we've got the whale and the shark in the water, but what type of water do they prefer? Do they prefer warm water, cold water? Same with um, safari animals uh, like your giraffe, your the big five, the elephants, the tigers. Why do they like Africa rather than the North or South Pole? So what I need you to do is I need you to get a world map up and ready. Now we remember our continents. You can have a bit of a sing. So it was Asia, Africa, North and South America, Antarctica, Europe, finally Australia. Okay, so those are all of our continents. Hope you like my singing voice. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each continent and probably look at one animal. OK, and I'm only going to look at one. because There are thousands and thousands of different animals I could be talking about. But I thought you could go with your own interest and research a animal. OK, so at first we're going to look at North America. Now, have a look where North America is. OK. And we're going to look at some animals. So I've got four examples here. I've got the alligator, beaver, moose, or brown bear. So I'm going to do a fact file, okay, on the moose. Okay, the moose are the largest member of the deer family. A male moose, the male mooses are called bull moose. Bull moose shed their antlers, so that's their horns that you can see during the winter and grow new ones every year. Wow. Female mooses are called cows. Mooses have, have hairy skin that hangs under the throat um, and that's called a bell. So I don't know if you can see on that picture. And then mooses have a hump on their back. Okay, can you see it? Uh, they are around seven feet tall. And I don't, I didn't know this, I don't think. Moose are great swimmers. Ooh, that's pretty cool, I think. I wouldn't have expected them to be good swimmers. So they are in North America. Now, I think we're going to go to South America. These animals look a little bit more exotic and more colourful. So we've got the red eye tree frog. OK, the squirrel monkey, the sloths, the toucan. And we are going to look. OK, let's have a look at where South America is. Just to recap, point at it on the television or the, the screen or however you're watching me. OK, and we're going to look at the sloth because I know a few of you sit on the sloth table. So sloths are very lazy. They sleep 20 hours a day. That's a lot longer than we do. We normally get about eight hours. They only wake up to feed, so they only wake up for food. Sounds a bit greedy. They spend most of the time hanging from trees. They eat leaves, twigs and fruits. And sloths are very, very slow. OK, so I mentioned the big five. OK, that's because in Africa they have a selection of animals called the big five. And they do include all of these. <clears throat> so we've got the African elephant. Zebra, lion, hippo. We are going to look at uh, where Africa is first. Okay, that's the mid one in the middle below Europe. Okay, and there we are going to look at the lion. Now they are the second largest big cat species in the world after tigers. Tigers are a bit bigger than lions. Lions can reach the speed of 50 miles an hour, but not for very long. So in and around your street where you live, it's probably about 30 miles an hour that the cars are allowed to go. So a lion can go faster than those cars. The roar of a lion can be heard five miles away. Oh my goodness, they must be very noisy. The lioness, that's another word for female lions, are better hunters than the males. So they do most of the hunting for the pride. So they're 
women are better than males at hunting. Okay, I wonder why that is. Maybe if you're interested in the lions, you could find that out. Okay, the hair around the male lion, uh, the main li the male lion's head is called the mane, and it's spelled with a split digraph A E. So it's M A N E. Okay, they eat meat and they hunt animals such as antelope and zebras. They live in groups called prides. Maybe you might have known that from the Lion King, where on, they're on the Pride Rock. Lions rest for 20 hours a day. Okay, so they rest for a long time too. Okay, now Europe and the United Kingdom. So we, you know, the United Kingdom is in Europe, and you might have seen some of these animals. You might have seen some puffins. You might have seen a red squirrel, a hedgehog, or a badger. You might not have because the badgers are at night time. Hedgehogs, you don't see many anymore, but you've got to be really careful with them because they're very precious. Okay, so we're in the middle of the map there. Can you see? I wonder if you can point to England, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland and Scotland, like we did in our starter. Okay, so we're going to look at hedgehogs. They eat insects, worms, snail, mice and frogs. Okay, they are nocturnal. What does nocturnal mean? I wonder if you can have a look at that word. Maybe press pause and go and find out what noc nocturnal means. Okay. They sleep in bushes or woodland. They hibernate in winter. What does hibernate mean? Yeah, that's right. It means they go and sleep for the winter whilst it's cold. And then they come out in summer. They have a coat of about 5,000 spines. Now you can see the little um, prickly bits. There's 5,000 of them. That is a lot. Okay, they have an excellent smell and they use their snouts, which is their nose, to sniff out prey. Um, and their spines, their little spikes, act as a defense against foxes and badgers. Because if an animal comes to eat it, it wouldn't be very nice because uh, all the spikes, spines, sorry would get stuck in that animal's mouth, which wouldn't be very pleasant for that person, for that animal trying to eat it. Okay, let's look at India now. Wow, peacocks, they look very beautiful. The snow leopard, tiger, and the black book. Okay, so we're gonna look in India. Can you spot where that would be? Okay, that would be in the A Asia area, okay. And peacock is a real name, is peafowl. Only the males are called peacocks. Females are called peahens and babies are called pea chicks. How cute is that? Peacocks live in, in the forest, okay? They eat grain, insects, small reptiles and mammals. Uh, berries, figs, leaves, seeds and flower pots. The male has a bright, beautiful feather while the females have a drab feather, feather colour. So they look a bit, they're a bit brown for females, whereas the males are these gorgeous greens, blues, purples, bright and uh, they're beautiful because they attract mates, okay? Um, a group of people is called a party or a pride, a bit like the lions, a pride, um, which is a group of peacocks. And then we've got the snow leopard, very cute, aren't they? A, um, a male is called a leopard, a female is called a leopardess. A baby is called a cub. They like to live in steep, rocky places. In summer, they stay high in mountains, and in winter, they come down into the forest. They eat and hunt sheep, goats, birds, and other small animals. Snow leopards are often hunted by humans, so they are an endangered species. Okay, so there are some people trying to hunt these animals, um, which isn't very nice because the, you know, we don't we don't want to hurt animals that um, that there aren't many of. So this is what it means if they're endangered. It means that there's not very many species, and soon, if they're all killed, we wouldn't have any of this animal left, and that animal would become extinct so it wouldn't it would no longer exist 
okay so which would be very sad so we've got to make sure that um we don't do any hunting like that the cubs stay with their mother for two years before they go off on their own so imagine only being three years old and then saying bye mum bye dad i'm going and then you're on your own that, that's not how we do it is it okay then we've got asia india uh, Asia, China. So we've got the panda, golden monkey, golden pheasant. We, we've got pheasants at home, but they're golden in China. We've got the yak. Okay, so again, Asia's up there. The panda. Have you seen a panda before? Mm, they look very cuddly, don't they? So it's native. I know the panda bear is. It's black and white fur and has large patches around its eyes. Uh, I wonder if you've ever seen panda eyes in your household. They live for around 20 years in the wild. Giant pandas mostly eat bamboo. They are an endangered, endangered species. So again, we've got to make sure we look after the pandas and we, we're creating new pandas and helping with that. It is estimated that there's only 2,000 are left in the wild. Okay, There's probably more in captivity. But there's only 2,000 in the wild. And they are very good climbers. Now we've got Australia. My sister lives in Australia and she tells me she sees lots of kangaroos out and about. Okay, so have a look. Where's that Australia? That's right. It's bottom right. Okay, it's a small island. It's all those little islands around it too for the continent. We're going to look at the wombat. Uh, it's the largest burrowing animal in the world. So a bit like a badger or a mole, they burrow under under the ground. Okay, so they're wombats. They're nocturnal too. So hopefully you found out what that word means. They're rarely seen in the wild, and they live in wet forests and sloping areas. They feed on grass, roots, bark, and moss. Uh, and females have pouches for their young. So a bit like kangaroos, they have like a pouch that um, their babies live. And the baby wombats are called joeys. And their teeth grow constantly because they are worn down from eating. Okay, so their teeth have to keep growing, otherwise they would, wouldn't have any teeth left. Okay, so here we've got the Antarctica. Lots of different animals, seal, penguin. Okay. And that's right at the bottom. That's that icy continent. So we've got the emperor penguin. Penguins cannot fly. Did you know that? I wonder if you've seen Happy Feet. Instead of wings, penguins have flippers to help them swim in the water. They can stay under the water for 20 minutes. I can't stay under the water for a minute. I wonder, well, 20 minutes is far too long. Emperor penguins are the biggest penguins out there. And they have 17 different species. So 17 different types kinds. Uh, their colours keep them camouflaged in the sea, so a nice white colour like the snow, their ice would be. They huddle around to keep warm in large groups. Okay, so they huddle um, to try and keep all that warmth in. They breed in the winter. Uh, males look after the eggs whilst females go to feed. They eat fish and other sea life. And after two months, the females return um, with food um, for the hatched eggs. So whilst the males are looking after the eggs, the women go away, go get food, and then they bring it back, and then the chicks hatch, and they share the food out, okay? So then we've got the Arctic. Lots of different animals there. Okay, and that's right at the top, the Arctic. And there's a polar bear. Polar bears have black fur underneath the outer layer of white fur. It is the largest land carnival. Polar bears hunt seals on the sea ice. They spend most of the time at sea. Polar bears keep warm due to the 10 centimeters of blubber under their skin. I think it means like the fat stores in their body. They have a really good sense of smell. And the reason polar bears are endangered isn't because people are hunting them, it's because of um, the ice melting. 
okay so the reason we talk about global warming and things like that is because we and recycling is because we want to look after our earth so not only do we have somewhere to live but so do all the wonderful animals around us including the polar bear okay so we've gone through so many different animals now if you've got access to a printer i would love you to maybe print out a map and have a look at the continents again and draw an equator line on and talk and maybe you put the different climate zones. Okay, so where is it going to be warm? Where is it going to be a bit slightly cooler? And where is it really cold? Okay, so that's a, a challenge for you. If you don't have a printer, well, second to that actually, sorry, what I want you to do is once you've done that to your map, I want you to try and place lots of the different animals I've spoke about. Maybe you could find out some more animals and I want you to um, put them on the map where you think they would live. Okay, so a bit like the picture here where you can see the emperor penguin is down here in the Antarctica and then we've got the African lion, the African elephant, the lion, the giraffe, all in Africa and then we've got the kangaroo in Australia, then we've got the panda, in Asia. Okay, so I want you to have a look at my picture there. Maybe you could do something similar with the climate zones, but also including the animals. If you don't have a printer, do not panic. Okay, your challenge is to create a bit like I did. I had lots of different slides with lots of different animals on. I want you to pick one animal. Now you can go back and look at my slides and try and write some interesting facts down and draw a picture of your animal. Or using the internet with your adult's help. Remember, if you're searching for anything at the end of your search, so if I wanted to do facts about hedgehogs, I would write facts about hedgehogs for kids, okay? To make sure I'm keeping nice and safe on that internet. So you can find out any facts about any animal OK, draw a picture and then maybe write down two, three facts and send them into the emails. So That is your challenges today. I hope you enjoy enjoyed your um, geography lesson and I really, really look forward to seeing all your lovely work and I'll see you soon.